the world leader in Internet talk radio. You're listening to America's Voice, voiceamerica.com. Good morning, everybody. Um, good morning. I'm Connie Sparks from Edmonton, Alberta. I'm one of your board members. Um, today I get the pleasure of introducing this morning's speaker. Um, he has left his wife and daughters at home in Georgetown, Ontario to join us here for this fantastic event on the West Coast. Uh, his official job title may be Marketing Leader for Profile, but more accurately, he is Intuit Canada's Voice of Accountants and Bookkeepers. Um, we were chatting a couple days ago and he uh, told me I could mention that he has been in the community for about two years. But I'm sure if I go dig in a drawer in my desk, I will find a 20-year-old file folder with a label that says emails from Scott. So I think that two years was a little bit of a typo. Um, anyway, yes, I should clean out my drawers. <laughs> Um, Scott was one of the first people I came across in my journey to um, be a software consultant that was there to help and support us bookkeepers um, and our practices. It was good to know that I wasn't alone and I'm sure as uh, all of you are glad to see his smiling face is still here for us to help us. Um, and just in case you haven't had a look at this yet, check out number three. And uh, you can go after that later. In the meantime, please welcome Scott Sandbergen. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. All right. Hey, did everybody have a good time last night at the boathouse? Yeah? That was pretty fun. All right, well, thank you so much for being here this morning. Uh, just a quick housekeeping thing. I do want to mention the, uh, we have a scavenger hunt card that has been placed on all your tables. Um, please take a look at this. This is going to get you into some prizes for later on. Um, there's a lot of interesting things on here, and I, I did not uh, agree to all the things on here. One of them is requesting a hug with me. So, um, And some people have been stopping me already at the breakfast line. I said, no, no, this is going to be like the amazing race. It doesn't start till 9 a.m. today. So, and it's like, Go! All right, uh, and I think there's lots of other interesting things in there as well. You know, there's a keyword you've got to look for in one of my slides today, by the way, too. So what I'm going to do today is I want to talk to you guys about our industry. I want to talk to you about the future of our industry. I want to talk about the role of bookkeepers and how you play a, a very important role in the industry. And specifically, I want to get into how technology is driving just profound change in the way that we operate, the way we work with our clients day in and day out. Okay, sound good? So, what could be more appropriate when you're going to have a conversation about the future to start with a very iconic image of futuristic, time travel, all these kinds of things, the DeLorean, right? So it's a great way to kind of kick off our presentation today because we're going to give you a glimpse into the future of the industry, the future of our business at Intuit, and also, I'm going to take you into a bit of a, a look back as well, because I think it's important to understand how far, how fast we've moved in the last 20, 30 years. So let's start by a bit of a recap. You've heard about Firm of the Future lots of times now. And uh, as, as we like to say it into it, a, a saying from our, from our CEO, repetition doesn't ruin the prayer, so we do want to just kind of recap this a little bit. What does it mean to be a Firm of the Future? Well, in simple terms, it's about leveraging technology to transform your business, strengthening those client relationships, and in turn, growing your practice. It's really, it's really as simple as that. There's three pillars to this, and I want to walk you through that in a little bit of detail. There's the, the first pillar is around getting on the cloud. Okay, So for many of you, step one, getting on the cloud, could mean I'm going to find my first client that's a suitable fit for QuickBooks Online. Right? You're now on the cloud, you're starting to realize the advantages and those benefits of working in a cloud-based environment. Pretty cool stuff. Some of you in the room that I know for a fact are quite a ways beyond that. You might have 20, 30, 50 clients already in QuickBooks Online. And you're now looking at ways to bring more cloud-based tools into your own practices. So t transitioning how you run your own bookkeeping practice into more of a cloud-based operation. There is an amazing a variety of tools out there that are going to help you do that, some of which are going to be in the exhibit center today. 
So that's really the first pillar, is about leveraging the cloud, leveraging the technology that's at your fingertips. The second pillar is repositioning yourself to become a trusted advisor, okay? We want to talk about not always having this role of being a compliancy officer or a data entry person, but one that is really rooted, rooted deeply in providing value to your clients because you are so deeply entrenched in your client's business and your client's data that you can help them make proactive decisions. Instead of analyzing their reports and giving them analysis on their financials, you start to become in a position because you're working in cloud-based software to predict their financials, to provide pro proactive advice to spot problems when they're, when they're veering off course in their business so you can put them back on course, okay? When you start doing that kind of stuff, your client looks at you as like, that's the partner I want to work with. I trust that person. You have an intense, loyal relationship suddenly. And it gets to the point where that client is never going to imagine going to another bookkeeper because you've built such loyalty up with them. Once you've begun doing those two things, this starts to happen naturally, right? You're going to start to grow. So you're leveraging the tools, you're leveraging the technology, you're, you're really playing that role of a trusted advisor, and you begin to grow. You also want to start leveraging tools like collaborative platforms, social media. You know, Brian and Leandro talked a lot yesterday about building your brand, making sure you have a presence on, online. That's very important stuff, right? Make sure you're there. Make sure clients can find you. Clients are looking for you and they're checking you out before they make contact with you because it's a different world now. They're not looking in the yellow pages looking for a bookkeeper. They're looking, they're, they're Googling who's, a, who's local to me, who's good, do they have any reviews about them, are they sharing content in any forums, are they helping people out on Facebook, do they have good advice to share, are they a sharing kind of person, okay? Think about what your social profile is. Google yourself sometimes to see what you look like. This is a true story, by the way. I Googled myself a few years ago, my, my own name, and I was shocked to find out that there was somebody I share a name with who happens to be a serial killer. No, no joke. Like, I, I've got a, a kind of a unique name, Zanbergen. I mean, how many people are, are Dutch with a first name of Scott? Not that many in the world. Scott Zanbergen is a serial killer, and he's on death row somewhere. N not a joke. So every once in a while, I, I actually set up a, a Google alert. So anytime my name is in the, in the media, I get an alert. And for a while there, it was just like, this guy's going through the court system. It's like, oh, this, i got to turn this off. It was depressing. <laughs> Okay, so as I promised at the outset, I want to take you back a little bit in time as well. So we're going to jump into my DeLorean. We're going to set the clock back. Uh, we're going to accelerate to, how fast do you have to go again? 88 miles an hour. Come on, back to the future fans, 1985. We're actually going to go a little bit further that in history, though. I want to take you back to 1983. First question, who here was doing bookkeeping in 1983? Hands up. Wow, quite a few of you. Who here was doing bookkeeping in 1983 but doesn't want to admit they were doing bookkeeping in 1983? Anybody? Who wasn't born in 1983? Anybody in here? We got a couple hands, you see? That's awesome. Well, let me tell you, if, if you weren't born in 1983, you missed a pretty awesome year. It was, it was a really important year for, for multiple reasons. One of my favorite reasons Return of the Jedi came out, right? Awesome, awesome movie, right? That was 1983. Another big milestone, Lotus 1, 2, 3. Who doesn't remember that? This was the product that finally let us kick VisiCalc to the curb once and for all, right? And shortly after that, unfortunately for Lotus, Excel comes out only a couple years later, and bye bye goes Lotus, right? So this is just amazing how fast these things just churn out. It's just interesting when you look back at technology, how this changes. Also in 83, this guy, Michael Jackson, taught us all how to moonwalk. Nobody can quite do it like him, of course. And last but not least, McDonald's introduced, introduced us all to a new healthy choice on their menu. <laughs> the, the, the pink sludge chicken McNuggets, right? <laughs> Yummy. 1983 was also important for another reason. You heard Brian talk about this a little bit yesterday. This was the year when Scott Cook, an entrepreneur, a very smart business guy, <laughs> sat at that very kitchen table and watched his wife struggling to, to, to manage the family financing, finances, writing checks, balancing the checkbook, all those kinds of things. And personal computers were starting to take off a little bit in this time frame, and so he thought, there's got to be a better way. I can build a solution that's going to streamline this for everybody. And, and thus, the idea for Quicken was born. So it came out in 1983. 
quickly became you know, a, a huge success story. It was the first of its kind, personal finance management software, and it's the product that Intuit was founded on. And as, as you heard the story, what happened was, it was a key learning, nobody expected this because it was designed for consumers to manage their finances. Suddenly no, they noticed through all the research and the follow me homes that Intuit tends to do, there were small business people using this because they needed ways to track their finances in their business. But it was never designed as an accounting product. It's not double entry accounting, it's not a bookkeeping solution, it's, it's for managing a checkbook. And so from there, the idea for QuickBooks was born. So QuickBooks first iteration came out in 1992 in the United States. Okay, so it was really, it, Quicken led the way to getting us here. Now sometime between 1983 and 1992, another product hit the market, in Canada specifically. It was 1985, anybody want to guess what product I'm talking about? Everybody knows, right? Bedford, of course. Bedford went on to you know, get acquired by Computer Associates, more on that later. Here's the very first ad that's Intuit published for QuickBooks. It was a failure. <laughs> it flopped horribly bad. So Scott, apparently it went down in advertising history as a horrendous flop. Scott Cook was just really, really angry about this. So they spent a lot of money. It was a two-page spread in PC Magazine. Uh, that marketing department did not last very long. So that's, that was the very first ad. We move forward to 1997. Technology is becoming more and more prevalent. Um, many of you guys were working, at, were, were bookkeepers, working at home offices that looked like this. We had monster-sized monitors. You remember, remember going to Future Shop to buy yourself a new monitor? I'm going to get that 19-inch Samsung for 549. You walk into the store like this. <laughs> Computer towers this high, blowing air, very loud. Cables. My God, the cables were everywhere. Wires, cables, and, and what does that attract? Dust bunnies. Just a, it was a mess, right? Wireless is such an amazing thing. That's what it all looked like back in the day. Don't laugh, but this is actually the year that I personally also got involved in this community. So here's me. 1990s, well, actually it's a little later than that, but it's late 90s. I was probably about 11 years old there, just so you know. And I was hired by a company called ACPAC International. We were a division of Computer Associates, so hence I was very familiar with Bedford, which turned into Simply and all those good times. So I, I really cut my teeth in the industry at this company. I stayed there for 14 years. And it was this company that I got to know so many of you, because I, I, my first and foremost job, my requirements of this job there was to build up the bookkeeper and accounting community. So I traveled the country back and forth with Alan Salmon and other people and uh, met many of you along the way. But I also had, was, had responsibility for things like our retail packaging and launches of the Simply Box back then. If there, anybody remembers what a software box looked like back in the 90s? They were big, they were thick, they were heavy. It, in, that, in that particular box, we had four printed manuals. Four. I, and I still can't remember what they all were. I was trying to think of it the other day. And you think now, and do we, do we think times are changing, now you can buy a thousand dollar supercomputer, it doesn't even come with one manual. Like, amazing, right? The other thing I did there is, is um, well, actually the other reason it was cool is because we had to put so many discs in the box. I, I was trying to remember how many discs went inside that box back in the day. I think it was about 15 or 20. 16? Clyde remembers everything. Local, local Simply historian there. <laughs> So what's cool about this is, you know, remember, remember when you'd have to install the software from diskettes? And, uh, and, you know, you put disk one in, chugs for 30, 60 seconds, insert disk two now, insert disk two. By the time you get to disk number 13, oh man, that one's corrupt, right? <laughs> Do you remember that? Awful. So we move forward to 2001. So 2001, into it, first began really envisioning, hey, we think there's an opportunity with the internet here, right? This is really ahead of its time. Internet, hmm, QuickBooks on the cloud, could be something here. So that was actually the year where the very first iteration of QuickBooks Online came out, pretty early. Coincidentally, a couple years later, me still working on the, on the ACPAC side of the house, we did a similar version on the, on the web. We called it Simply Online. Both of those products really didn't go anywhere, right? Because they were just way ahead of their time. But the, the inkling of an idea was really there. 2011 is when I personally had my aha moment. So I, I took a bit of a career change at that point, decided to go work for a startup. 
uh, specializing in cloud accounting software. And for me, even though that the, the solutions on the market in 2011 were not perfect yet, as we all would attest to, all the, all the cloud solutions, they were, they were getting way further along in their journeys. And I think many of us started to go, this is going to be revolutionary for this industry in terms of the way we work with our clients, in terms of the way we collaborate, share data, the role that bookkeepers play, like bank feeds coming in, getting rid of all that, that uh, manual data entry, just completely changed putting it on its head. Amazing stuff. So for me, my eyes opened up wide and I realized this is going to be cool. I, gotta, I, I want to be involved here. 2012 comes around. Intuit says, all right, QuickBooks Online, pretty good now. It's pretty robust. We're taking this thing global. It comes to Canada. So that's when QuickBooks Online first came to Canada. Of course, desktop had been in Canada for uh, at least a decade, actually longer than that, probably 15 years at this point already. <coughs> Brings us to today, quick reality check. So proof is in the pudding, right? So let's look at the numbers. So in 2015, QuickBooks Online hit 1 million paid subscribers globally. So these are actual business owners running their books on QuickBooks Online. Coincidentally, 2015 is the year that I joined into it. I'm not sure there's a correlation between that million, no. <laughs> but I joined in January 2015. This past August, so last month, we hit 1.5 million. So the pace of growth is astounding at this point. We're now at the point, as of somewhere mid-2015, QBO surpassed QuickBooks Desktop in terms of growth for new customers. We still sell a ton of QuickBooks Desktop. It's a thriving, healthy business. But 2015 was the year when the new customers coming in, more of them were choosing QuickBooks Online versus QuickBooks Desktop. Okay, so that's the, the tipping point. And it's all, that gap is just going to widen now over time, we believe. And we're anticipating our, our growth trajectory takes us to about 2 million by the end of 2017. My favorite stat about this slide, it took us almost eight years, to, when, when QuickBooks Online first came out, almost eight years to get to our first 100,000 paying customers. It took us three months to, to get our most recent 100,000 paying customers. And that's kind of the run rate that we're on now, and that's growing more quickly every day. Okay. So the next chapter in, in the history is that we are really transitioning our products to becoming platforms. So you hear us talk a lot about the app ecosystem, third-party applications. There's going to be a keynote tomorrow at lunch, Chris Fudge is doing, where they're going to go into more of a deep dive on that particular ecosystem. It's really cool stuff. You look in the exhibit center today when it opens up, you'll see all of the exhibitors in there that have applications that extend the value of QuickBooks Online. So QuickBooks Online, think of it as the foundation. It's the, it's the heartbeat, it's the accounting system, and all these third-party applications extend that value. But what I want to talk to you about is another platform play, and that is, well, we haven't talked much about tax yet, right? And I know from last year's IPBC survey that Alan so kindly gave me a copy of, 75% of IPBC members prepare taxes. About 50% of you do corporate taxes, okay? Intuit happens to have both accounting solutions and professional tax solutions. We're the only company on the market that has both sides of that spectrum. Doesn't it make sense for us to figure out how to start to make these products play nicely together, talk together, have data flow seamlessly between each other? So as of this past Tuesday, two days ago, great timing because we're here today, two days ago we shipped a product or shipped a feature inside of QuickBooks Online Accountant Edition called Work Papers. Anybody seen this yet? A few of you, if you log into QBOA, that's the Accountant Edition, you will see it. Work Papers is going to help you streamline your year-end process for your clients, okay? So get into one screen, review client files, fix bookkeeping errors, make adjustments, journalize, whatever you need to do, add notes, attach documents, bank statements, all into one file, creating the year-end flow right with inside the QBOA world. Then map the Giphy codes automatically, we'll do that for you, okay? You can adjust them if need be. One click, you've got your Giphy file ready to go. We will suck that directly inside of Profile, and you're very close to completing your T2 at that point. Okay? That's where we're at right now. That's available today. In the future, we certainly expect there to be a more bi-directional communication between these products. I can't commit to time frames, but I just wanted to share with you the vision that we are on is to bring these products more closely together. So imagine 
all of those insights that are living inside of profile, tax planning tips and things like that, bubbling up into your QBOA dashboard. So now, if you think about your journey to becoming a, a trusted advisor, we want to arm you with more data, more intelligence, so you can have tax conversations earlier with your clients. Changing tax from being a one-time annual event to more, of, to more of an always-on thing. So you'll always be able to look inside, how are we trending, what's the tax burden going to be for this client, can I make any recommendations to put them on a different course right now? We want to really start to bridge that together for you. So I just wanted to really emphasize that point is that this is a big, big mission for us to really kind of bridge these platforms together. That's the future. All right, so next on our agenda this morning. I want to talk with three of you guys in the audience uh, about your journeys, your personal journeys to becoming firms of the future. Many of you are on this journey today, and we've, we, we know who you are, and you know, we, we, we really respect the work that you're doing, but there are three people that, uh, that we want to bring on the stage, and the first is Tracy Lampron. Why don't you come on up? <laughs> Welcome. How you doing, Tracy? I'm good. good. How are you? I don't have a mic. Oh my God, no mic. <laughs> Testing. Beautiful. There you go. Well, welcome to the show. Thank you very much for the invitation. <laughs> um, so, Tracy, I, I wanted to just kind of talk with you about uh, your your journey, and before we do that, maybe just give us a little bit of context around who you are, where you're from, a bit about your firm. Okay. So my name is uh, Tracy Lampron, and I'm from Gatineau, Quebec, which is uh, about uh, 10 minutes from Ottawa. So I service um, clients in the Ottawa, Udway, Gatineau area, um, and I've been running my business uh, for the past nine years uh, from my home, and um, yeah, that's, that's what I do. Enjoying life? I do, Awesome. Yes. Um, so you, I believe you moved your own practice to the cloud. I did. Right? So tell, yes. tell us a bit about why you did that. What, was, what inspired you to do that? Uh, so at the IPBC conference in Mississauga in 2013 um, was my first insight into cloud accounting. And I kind of had my aha moment and thought it was great, I was gonna give it a try. I actually went to my hotel room that night, signed up, did my subscription, I was you know, ready to go. Um, and uh, I started my own uh, practice, I put my books um, on the cloud starting in January 2014. Okay. That was my first. Um, I figured if I'm going to recommend it to my clients, I need to make sure that um, I was comfortable running my own business on that software. And how was it? Any bumps? Lots of bumps. Lots of bumps. <laughs> <laughs> um, for sure. I am. I think the biggest um, the biggest challenges is that you know you think QuickBooks Desktop. I'm a QuickBooks Desktop user. I'm going to just go to QuickBooks Online. It's going to be all great. It's not the same product. It's different. It works differently. And I think that once I made that shift in my mind that. Yes, it's the same company. Intuit is the same company that produces both products, but it's not the same. And learn how to use QuickBooks Online um, is awesome. Mm -hmm. And so I started uh, transforming my business. Someone once told me that the that QuickBooks Desktop and QuickBooks Online share a name and not much else. Right? Exactly. <laughs> I think it probably would have been easier for people to make that switch had the name not been the uh -huh. same. I kind of agree. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. Um, has it, has it uh, made a, a difference in the way you, you work with your clients? I mean, can you talk a little bit about um, any efficiencies that you gained through that? Absolutely. So one of, the, one of the big reasons that I moved is that my business was growing. And um, I was at a, a tipping point where I needed to make a decision whether I was going to hire someone or I was just going to, you know, stay status quo. And... I saw an opportunity with QuickBooks Online to be able to streamline my processes and um, 
create more opportunities than just being a data entry clerk. Mm -hmm. I felt that the job that I was doing was, you know, my clients bring over their their receipts, their shoebox, their file folder, however you can get them organized. And I would do the data entry and then I would tell them how the last three months went. Yeah. And I wanted to, I knew I could provide more services uh, for them if I had the time. So using QuickBooks Online um, and using the uh, apps ecosystem, I'm, I was able to transform my practice. Awesome. Yeah. So speaking of app ecosystem, um, can you tell us a bit about um, your, how you've embraced third-party apps? Are there any particular ones that, uh, that you work with frequently, and how has it changed the way that you work with your clients? Yeah, so it changes a lot. So I think that at the beginning, I did QuickBooks Online, and I wasn't using the apps, and I felt a frustration there that I was not... I was not getting it, or it wasn't doing maybe what I wanted it to do. And then the next step was that apps ecosystem. So, you know, there's tons, there's there's tons of people here, and there's tons of apps, and and we go away with these these expectations we get. You know, we sign up for all of them, and yeah. I think it's important to walk away and say which ones will really benefit my clients, and and test out one or two. So I use a lot of the. Uh, data automation. So I use HubDoc, I use Receipt Bank, I use uh, WagePoint. Uh -huh. um, I just started using Pluto as well. So it's a way to uh, get my clients more engaged into the re their responsibility as business owners and get them uh, on board and and work with the uh, with the apps. Super. Yeah. Um, I think you want to share a client success story maybe that you have. Um, I know we talked before, you had one in the medical industry. Yeah, so yeah. I had, um, I have this client, he was starting his, uh, his dental practice. And so at the beginning, it's, you know, it's a s small business, it's growing, but he has time to do his own day-to-day -day stuff, paying bills and but as the business is growing, he's now finding that he's doing this in the evenings. Mm -hmm. But he won't let me switch from desktop. He's, you know, I go into his office once a month. I work there. He's comfortable with that. That's, you know. Mm -hmm. So I'm trying to, as his business is growing, and I see that he's sending me emails on Sundays and, you know, working evenings and sending me emails and, you know, midnight. I know that there's... I know that there is room there for improvement. So we start slow. So I say QuickBooks Online. I'd, we'd like to, I'd like to, you know, and talk about the benefits and being able to be more efficient because his business is growing. And he does, I know he doesn't want to do that. That's not what he wants to do. So we start with that. And he hems and he haws and he, you know, so that's, it's a slow <laughs> process and then, you know, we get the bank feeds in, and, and um, so today we have the, the bank feeds in place. We have, uh, he now uses HubDoc. Uh, we're able to, you know, get his documents fetched, uh, and I have reports that are emailed out to him on a monthly basis, so the reports, I don't need to think about it. I know that, you know, whatever day I have his work scheduled, the following day his reports go out to him, uh, he's happy. He has questions. Um, it's but he's asking a question about what I posted yesterday mm. or what was deposited yesterday, and it's we're able to make better decisions mm -hmm. as to okay, my business is growing. I have you know money to invest, but he knows that you know what his bank balance is today, and he knows what's coming out tomorrow, and. It's just it's it's just a much Great. better working relationship. I'm not the data entry clerk that goes in yeah. and you know just posts the invoices and says where's your visa statement yeah. and you're you know the staff didn't bring in the receipts for yeah. stuff that they had to go and get. So it uh, it was definitely a shift. It was definitely um, a process where I had to meet him where he was at. Yeah, and. When I saw an opportunity that he was, you know, now struggling to not be able to do what he was doing before, then I'd say, okay, well, I see, you know, you're sending me emails at midnight. Mm -hmm. 
how, what are you doing, and how can we streamline that better? Awesome. Good. So, yeah, it's worked so That's a good success well. story. It yeah, is, yeah. yeah. Awesome. So. Well, that's great. Um, thank you for sharing that. I um, want to bring up guest number two now. Absolutely. And that is going to be Marnie Stretch. Where's Marnie? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I need a mic for you. Yes, I do. I have one. Thank Look at that. So convenient. Thank you. Welcome. Thank you very much. So if anybody doesn't know Marnie, she's uh, been around this community for a long time and usually can see her tearing up the dance floor on the, on the nights uh, of really? the party. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. You know. Challenge? You know, yes. Um, Marnie, so thanks for being here. Um, same kind of thing. I just want to talk to you about, um, you know, you, you, I really see you as kind of how you transition your own, yourself, your brand as being that trusted advisor. Sure. Um, maybe just kind of give us some commentary around how technology has helped revolutionize your role as a bookkeeper. Okay. So uh, first, uh, my name is Marnie Stretch. I live in Alberta. I lived in California actually for a very long time. So in 1991, when QuickBooks came out, I actually had somebody that was just moving from QuickBooks, Quicken into QuickBooks. So I've been using oh. it for quite a while, actually. Um, I'm a dual citizen. I have a business. I'm a solopreneur, just um, flying by myself. I do a lot of consulting, not as much bookkeeping, um, using a lot of the tools that Tracy mentioned and QBO, of course. And I still use desktop. I have desktop clients, a lot of enterprise clients, and yep. do a lot of projects with that. Awesome. Okay, so technology. Yeah, so like how, um, how has technology helped reshape how you think of your role that you play with your clients? Yeah, so I think um, your aha moment and your aha moment is the same as my aha moment. Um, so QBO was a really big shift for me. So my business when I was in California, I'm sure like a lot of you, um, I worked by the hour, I would go to my customer, and every time I say client, by the way, you can yell out customer, because I'm really trying hard, um, but always catch myself saying client, but um, shout out to Ron and Ed, yes, I'm trying very hard with customers. So I would go there, I would um, write down the time I started, uh, you know, take the receipts, do the data entry, uh, make sure everything was completed, Note my time, go home, right? Yep. There weren't a lot of add-on tools. Um, you know, a lot of us use Transaction Pro Importer. That was one of the tools, but not really many tools. So it, was, it didn't change for many, many years. That was the business. And when I moved back to Canada in 2006, um, I was able to use the, uh, uh, I think it was called WebEx, right inside QuickBooks to work remotely with some of the clients. So that was really clients, customers. So that was... <laughs> That was very exciting for me um, that I could do that. It, it was clunky. It didn't work. You'd go to reconcile and the lines didn't line up and those kinds of things. So I didn't keep some of those customers. Um, mm -hmm. There was a couple. Um, but fast forward to roughly around the time um, that you transitioned and QBO came to Canada and um, it was a real game changer. First of all, it meant that I could have the practice that I wanted to have so I could be here, I could be in California, I could be in Quebec, um, which is where I live for part of the year. So I can kind of design my practice how I'd like to. I can work anywhere. Not that that means I do work anywhere, because I like to take some time <laughs> off. <laughs> um, but I can work anywhere I need to. So that's really changed. Um, the apps have really, really changed a lot. Um, one of my observations, I think, a lot of people coming from desktop, we haven't used apps, and one observation I had moving from the States to Canada is when I lived in the States, everybody outsourced their payroll. I, for whatever reason, I didn't have a single customer that did their own payroll within QuickBooks. When I moved to Canada, it was the exact opposite. Everybody did their own payroll. So I think that um, Canadians have a little bit of a harder time adopting the app sometimes, mm. like they're a little less so, but the apps are so fabulous. So the whole ecosystem has changed, and um, without, without those apps, I mean, my life would be a lot more difficult for sure, so. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's, that's just inspiring to hear how you're describing how technology has just made, made you be able to be uh, 
run the kind of business you want to run, right? It's like having a different profession. Like, honestly, the job that I had in the 90s is so different. It's so far removed from mm -hmm. what I do now and how I do the work and where I do the work. So. Would you go back if you could? No, no. And I'm, I mean that sincerely because... Yeah, it's really my practice. Like, I know this from hearing this in yoga. The yoga teachers always say, you know, do your own thing. Don't compare yourself. It's your practice. Do what you can. But I really like my practice now. I don't feel... I, I, I guess that felt more like an employee, right? And now I really do feel um, equivalent. I feel like partners with these businesses rather than a data entry clerk. Cool, so, cool. Yeah, yeah. Can you share a client success story with us? Sure. Um, so picture the Alberta... Plains and there's a, a boy born on the farm and he's living in rural Alberta. He's one of my customers, so he's born into a farm family. That's how he was raised. He lived on the farm. But when he was older, he moved into the big city and he started up a construction company. Um, so a few years ago, his accountant, who was actually retired, came to me and said, listen, can you take this kid on? He's a really, really good kid, but he just knows like nothing about this stuff. And he really was a shoebox client, customer. Um, so, <laughs> okay. so I got him onto QuickBooks Desktop at first um, because there was a lot of catch-up to do. He wasn't, the payroll was being done at year-end, you know, the thing where the accountant, you know, converts the money that he's taking, that, that whole thing, right? And I wanted to get him away from that. He was behind, there were some penalties. Got him onto Desktop, and as soon as we had like a year in and things were going well, I converted him to QBO. Um, so he is now, um, like I'll fast forward this story, but basically we're both in the file now. I have a beautiful workflow. This is one of my favorite customers because we put everything into HubDoc. He takes pictures. So, so not only am I fetching, um, and this is, exa it sounds exactly like Tracy's story. Uh, he's taking pictures, they go into HubDoc. Um, I manage the documents in HubDoc. They integrate right into QBO. So I, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not even really using the bank feeds, although the bank feeds are supporting, so it's so helpful. Um, comes right in with the GST split out. Um, it's a beautiful workflow. And he's in there. He can read his financials. He's doing his own payroll now. He's interested in his books. Um, and he is he's aware of the work that goes into it. And he actually sent me an email saying, um, that he appreciates the work going on behind the scenes that he doesn't see. So I'm very happy that he knows that. Because I think sometimes a lot of our customers, they don't know uh, how much we do for them, right? Or how many hours we spend on the phone with you know, whoever, right? Tech support or a new mm -hmm. app or researching or those kinds of things. So he is, it's a real success story for him because he really knew nothing about finances. And certainly he's technologically challenged. And now he's in his own books all the time, looking at his growth, um, saying, well, I made this much more this year. So it's it's, it's That's awesome. Good. Yeah. Nice job. Yeah. Good job. Success Thank story you. for sure. Yeah. All right. Round of applause for these two ladies. Wait, you have one more? I, ha I, I want to say something. I'm just going to pitch my session this afternoon. If you know what WPM means, can you shout it out? Thank you. Some people, I'm sorry I didn't put that in the description, but if, if words per minute is your calling card, we got to talk. So come talk to me about um, moving from that data entry scenario into this new beautiful world of QBO and apps and those kinds Little of things. Little impromptu market research and a plug for your session. Nice job. Yeah, thank you. Awesome. All right. We have one more. But wait, there's more. I'd like to invite up Wayne Zilke. Where's Wayne? Come on up, Wayne. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Look at that, look at that. <laughs> Bring it in, eh? <laughs> Hello. All right. Wayne, have a seat. Thanks for joining. Thank Wayne, what's, uh, where are you from? Um, North Vancouver, actually. North Vancouver. Yeah. Nice and close to home, to yeah, home nice here. Nice and yeah. close. A good short trip this morning. Yeah. yeah. And what's, uh, what's the name of your firm? We have a firm uh, called Ledgers Online. Okay. And... Uh, yeah, we, we've been in business uh, since 2002. We started the remote bookkeeping field early, um, came out of a, uh, a traditional CA practice, and uh, we converted to doing bookkeeping, learned lots of uh, lessons along the way, made lots of mistakes, and I can relate to some of the stories that they uh, Very good. have here. 
So I, I know we wanted to talk to you specifically about this idea of growing your practice because you've got a really phenomenal success story on how you've gone from, I think you started with two employees when you first yeah. launched. We did start with two em employees, my, uh, myself and my cousin. Yeah. And uh, I remember uh, late nights uh, scanning invoices, which was, you know, for a guy who was, I'm a chartered accountant for people that are used to doing other things and having people work for them, that was kind of an interesting experience to start that way. <laughs> <laughs> Humbling. <laughs> and uh, and how, how have you grown since then? So, what, so tell us what the status of your firm is today. Yeah, so we're, we're 20 people today, um, mostly bookkeeping staff. We're fortunate to be able to have a small marketing department and uh, uh, so we've done a lot of internal web design and so on. Awesome. So what, what would you say the keys to your success have been? Because, I mean, that's, that's some pretty good growth, right, for yeah, uh, going yeah, for, to we, 20 employees. Yeah, we've been growing 30%, 40% a year the, over the last few years. Um, and I, I would say more recently, the, uh, you know, one of the uh, successes is just being able to hire people that, and creating an environment that people want to work in. We've done that. We offer a lot of flexibility. We have a number of part-time uh, bookkeepers. Um, we have a team environment that uh, that we've created. So you know, people are supported. People, when, there's no struggling for answers. There's somebody we have qualified accountants on staff as well. So we're able to answer client questions, awesome. you know, immediately, basically. Very good. Yeah. Very good. Um, and you do a bit of digital marketing, I understand, right? So Google AdWords and whatnot. Yeah. So very, were you, I just, I'm curious, were you sitting in yesterday's session that Brian and Leandro did? No. You I, missed it. Okay. Yeah, I but missed you, that. But you're a whiz kid in this already, it sounds well, like. Well, I don't know about a whiz kid. It's a changing, uh, moving target. But uh, no, very early on in, you know, 02, 03, we... We uh, signed up for AdWords, and I, you know, I did, I did it myself, and we, we you know, we uh, spent uh, you know quite a bit of money at sometimes, and uh, you know, on AdWords, and then we we continued to evolve that and work on our SEO. We were fortunate to get a young fellow from Ireland to come and work for us who had a, an e-business degree oh. from a place called Tipperary. <laughs> <laughs> and he took a, a personal interest in, in, uh, in the web and, uh, and we started to do some SEO in-house. We had tried contracting it out and, and yep. that kind of thing, but we found uh, like in-house there, there wasn't a replacement for that connection directly Good. into the business. And, and can you attribute some of the growth that you've had directly yeah. to the, the, yeah, the investment you've made there? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. It, and you had to be patient. I, I, I think you know that's what, patience and persistence at uh, building a practice is what's required. Doing it on a regular basis, every day, if possible. And uh, it, it's really paid dividends for us. I would recommend that everybody try it, but don't be afraid to do it yourself. Yeah. Are you doing any in social as well? Yeah, social has been more uh, recent. In, in the last six months, we put on a, uh, a push into social, and uh, you know that now we're generating over uh, 10,000 tweet impressions was one of the stats that we had uh, per month. Uh, for ledgers online, so really cool. Yeah, really it's cool. Been really cool. You know, a bit, a bit of an adventure for an yeah. old guy, but <laughs> <laughs> you're not old. Um, t tell me a bit about, like, because I know you've transitioned. You you built a product internally yeah. um, to manage your own your own workflows and whatnot, and then you've commercialized it. It sounds like yeah. Er early on, you know, we um, we were struggling. I think uh, you know everybody in this room can relate to trying to get information from people. And uh, way before uh, you know, tools like HubDoc and we, our Ledger Dice product were out, we, we built something, we just called it the portal initially. And, and, uh, the portal. The portal, mm, yeah. Nice. Yeah. That's cool. yeah, pr you know, pretty good for an accountant, eh? <laughs> <laughs> um, but but um, we, it, it evolved and we just felt that we would commercialize the, uh, the product and it would uh, for, enforce some discipline on us. It's really helped us to connect to our clients. All of our clients are, are on it, um, and we're, we continue to build additional links. Or we built last year a, a connection to QuickBooks Online, so you can push documents directly into QuickBooks Online. It's really built. We, we use our bookkeeping uh, pool as a um, 
uh, as a test base for for everything we do. And and actually, just today we uh, were announcing that we uh, have a connection with the ScanSnap Cloud that we're oh. launching today. Super so cool! Wow, yeah. Yeah. that's awesome! Awesome. So, so, and you guys, I think, are exhibiting in the yeah, exhibit hall as well. Yeah, we have an exhibit here. Yeah, so yeah. it's Ledger's... Ledger Docs. Ledger Docs. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, come check those guys out yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah. We come, come by and... I love hearing success stories of that when you, when you create a, a set of processes and software internally to solve a problem that you're having, and you realize, hey, there might be a market yeah, outside of these walls for the yeah, same thing. and yeah. we've had great success. We have clients right around North America using it. So. Oh, really cool. And I'm using that client term. I'm not sure. Customer. Super. So. Okay. Well, thank you very much. That was, uh, that was awesome to hear. Big round of applause for our panelists, everybody. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Thank you very much. Okay. I will take the mics. Okay, thank you. Okay, later. Yeah. <laughs> Autographs later. Thank you so much. All right. Well, you know, I, I wanted to have that conversation with, um, with those three specifically because I think it really just it really emphasizes and reinforces the points that we've been trying to talk about here is that when you, when you put a concerted effort towards doing things like moving to the cloud and embracing technology, and when you do things like change up your business models, uh, adopt value pricing, and just think of yourself as that trusted advisor, that you are going to see growth. You know, I think Wayne's example of how he grew enormously is just, it's, it's inspiring. And my, my advice and the takeaway I'd like to leave with you this morning is think about where you and your practices fit in your journey on on moving towards the cloud, moving towards becoming a firm of the future. Where are you in that journey? Because as the saying goes, if you're not moving forward, you're moving backwards, right? So think about, can you, can you take a step in that right direction? Can you get a first client working on cloud-based software? Start to chart that path. As business people, we all know that the, one of the most important things we can do when, when running and owning your own business is to create value in that company. Whether you have aspirations to grow the company into a small enterprise someday, or you're simply thinking about what's my short, medium, or long-term succession planning, you want to be creating value. You want to make sure your company is, is constantly transitioning, transitioning, ad adapting, and uh, embracing the changes. So with that, I want to say thank you very much for being here today. I also want to say that we absolutely love this community. We love you guys. I personally love you guys, actually, a lot. And I, I've, I've been accused of having a strange, a strange obsession with bookkeepers, and I, I don't know what it is, but I do really love this community. And uh, you guys are inspiring to us. I mean, if you think about the, uh, what you do for the economy, for the Canadian economy, helping Canadian small business owners thrive, it's, it's incredible. So uh, it's, it's inspiring. We're humbled by your presence. We love, we love you guys. Please come to our booth. Um, please, please come talk to us. Visit our third-party app ecosystem partners. They're all here as well. Um, we'd love to have those conversations. And with that, I want to say thank you very much. Enjoy the rest of the conference. And uh, hugs start at 9. <laughs>